my whole villain is this hyperactive hive mind workflow. The tool is fine. I don't want the tool to go away, but I want to replace the hyperactive hive mind workflow. I think this is going to be one of the biggest value generating productivity revolutions of the 21st century. I quote an anonymous CEO is pretty well known who says this is going to be the moonshot of the 21st century is going to be of that importance. There's so much latent productivity that's being suppressed because we just figure things out on the fly in email yeah. that as we figure that out, I think it's going to be uh, hundreds of billions of dollars. You're so absolutely right. The question is, what does the world without email look like? How do we fix email? So what happens is, at least in my vision, you identify, well, actually... There's these different processes that make up my workday. Like these are things that I do repeatedly, often in collaboration with other people that do useful things for my company or whatever. Right now, most of these processes are implicitly implemented with the hyperactive hive mind. How do we do this thing? Like answering client questions to shoot messages back and forth. You know, how do we do this thing? Posting podcast episodes, we'll just figure it out on the fly. Mm -hmm. My main argument is we actually have to do like they did in the industrial sector, take each of these processes and say, is there a better way to do this? And by better, I mean a way that's going to minimize the need to have unscheduled back and forth messaging. So we actually have to do process engineering. This created a massive growth in productivity in the industrial sector during the 20th century. We have to do it in knowledge work. We can't just rock and roll in inboxes. We actually have to say, how do we deal with client questions? Well, let's put in place a process that doesn't require us to send messages back and forth. How do we post podcast episodes? Let's automate this to a degree where I don't have to just send you a message on the fly. And you do this process by process and the pressure on that inbox is released. And now you don't have to check it every six minutes. So you still have email. I mean, like I need to send you a file. Sure. I'll use email, but we're not coordinating or collaborating over email or Slack, which is just a faster way of doing the hive mind. I mean, Slack doesn't solve anything there. Uh, you have better structured bespoke processes. I think that's, what's going to unleash this massive productivity. Bespoke. So the interesting thing is like, if, for example, you and I exchange some emails. So obviously I, uh, for let's just say my particular case, I schedule podcasts. There's a bunch of different tasks, fascinatingly enough, that I do that can be converted into processes. Yeah. Is it up to me to create that process? Or do you think we also need to build tools just like email was yeah. a protocol for uh, helping us create processes for the different tasks. I mean, I, I think ultimately the whole organization, the whole team has to be involved. I think ultimately there's certainly a lot of investor money being spent right now to try to figure out those tools, right? So I think Silicon Valley has figured this out in the past couple of years. This is the difference between when I was talking to people after deep work uh, and now five years later is this scent is in the air, mm -hmm. right? Because there's so much latent productivity. So yes, there are going to be new tools, which I think could help. There are already tools that exist. I mean, in the different groups I profiled use things like Trello or Basecamp or Asana or Flow and, you know, our schedule wants and acuity. Like there's, there's a lot of tools out there. The key is not to think about it in terms of what tool do I replace email with? Instead, you think about it with, I have a pro we're trying to come with a process that reduces back and forth messages. Oh, what tool might help us, might help us do that. Yeah. And I, and I would push, it's not about necessarily efficiency. In fact, some of these things are going to take more time. So writing a, a letter to someone is like a high value activity. It's probably mm -hmm. worth doing. Mm -hmm. The thing that's killer is the back and forth because now I have to keep that's checking, it. right? So we scheduled this together because I, I knew you from before, but like most of the, the interviews I was scheduling for this, actually, I have a process with my publicist where we mm -hmm. use a shared document and she puts stuff in there and then I check it twice a week and there's scheduling options. And I say, here's when I want to do this one or this will work for this one or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it takes more time in the moment than yes. just, but it means that we have almost no back and forth messaging for podcast scheduling, which without this, so like with my UK publisher, I didn't put this process into place because we're not doing as many interviews, but it's all the time. And I, I'm like, oh man, I could really feel the difference, right? It's the back yeah. and forth that's killer. I suppose it is up to the individual people involved. Like you said, uh, uh, knowledge workers, like they have to carry the responsibility of uh, creating processes. Like how, always asking the first principles question, how can this be converted yeah. into a process? Yeah, so you can yeah. start by doing this yourself, like just with what you can control. Uh, I think ultimately once the te teams are doing that, I think that's probably the right scale. If you try to do this at the organizational scale, you're gonna get bureaucracy, right? So if it's, that's exactly you know, right. All right, if, if, uh, if Elon Musk is gonna dictate down to everyone at Tesla or something like this, that's too much removed and you get bureaucracy. But if it's, we're a team of six, that's working together on, you know, whatever powertrain software. 
then we can figure out on our own, what are our processes? How do we want to do this? So it's ultimately also creating a culture where saying like an email, sending an email just for the hell of it, it should be taboo. Like, yeah. so like you are being, uh, you're being destructive to the productivity of the team by sending this email, yeah. as, as opposed to uh, helping develop uh, a process and so on uh, that that will ultimately automate this. That's yeah. why I'm trying to spread this message of the context switches as poison. I get so much into the science of it. I think we underestimate how much it kills us mm -hmm. to have to wrench away our context, look at a message and come back. And so once you have the mindset of, it's a huge thing to ask of someone to have to take their attention off something and look back at this, and if they have to do that for three or four times, like we're just going to figure this out on the fly and every message is going to require five checks of the inbox while you wait for it. Well, you've, now you've created whatever it is at this point, 25 or 30 context shifts. Like you've just done a huge disservice to someone's day. This would be like if I had a professional athlete, it's like, hey, do me a favor. I need you to go do this press interview, but to get there, you're going to have to carry this sandbag and sprint up this hill, like completely exhaust your muscles. And then you have to go play a game. Like, of course, I'm not going to ask an athlete to do like an incredibly physically demanding thing right before a game, but something as easy as thoughts, question mark, or like, hey, do you want to jump on a call? And it's going to be six back and forth messages mm -hmm. to figure it out. It's kind of the cognitive equivalent, right? Mm -hmm. You're taking the wind out of someone. Yeah. And by the way, for people who are listening, because I recently posted a few job openings for us, so I want to help with this thing. And uh, one of the things that people are surprised when they work with me is how many spreadsheets and processes are involved. Yeah, it's like Claude Shannon, right? I, I talked about communication theory or information theory. It takes time to come up with a clever code up mm -hmm. front. So you spend more time up front figuring out those spreadsheets and trying to get people on board with it. But then your communication going forward is all much more efficient. So over time, you're using much less bandwidth, right? So you 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 do pain up front. Yes, it's quicker just right now to send an email. But if I spend a half day to do this over the next six months, I've saved myself six hundred emails.